Hello friends and welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at a very revered Gibson pickup. It is the Gibson Custom Bucker. And uh, for those of you who don't know about it, this is, even though it's been around for several years, this is Gibson's most recent attempt at recreating as perfectly as possible the sound of the original PAF humbuckers that Gibson introduced back in the 1950s. Uh, you can only get them in custom shop guitars if you want them new. You can, you know, pick them up used on the internet and you're going to pay a hefty price for them. But uh, are they worth it? Let's take a look and see what makes these Gibson custom buckers so special. So you ask, do they sound exactly like the original PAF pickups? And I ask right back at you, which exact one of the thousands of PAF pickups that were produced are you talking about? Because they're all different. Uh, you've heard people refer to PAFs as warm and smooth or bright and articulate or punchy or spanky or beefy and just about any word you can think of to describe a sound has been attributed to the PAF pickups. And they're all right because there were so many inconsistencies in the way these pickups were produced. Um, before we can compare these custom buckers to anything, we really need to take a quick look at how PAFs were produced and why every pickup is a little bit different from the other. PAFs used Alnico 2, 3, 4, and 5 magnets, uh, kind of at random. Uh, if you were in the middle of a run and you ran out of Alnico 2 magnets, uh, you didn't stop production and wait for some more. You reached over into the Alnico 4s or the Alnico 5s and kept on winding. You used what was there. And also, uh, it was cheaper to buy Alnico alloy unmagnetized, so Gibson would actually charge the magnets at the factory. And, you know, according to a lot of stories, some of the magnets weren't fully charged. And then there were also the inconsistencies in winding the pickups. Uh, an employee who worked on the original manual winding machine has said that the gear mechanism that was used for counting the turns was so inconsistent and broke so often that they actually used a timer. They would just wind until the clock said to stop and then they would stop. And this is one of the reasons why you've got PAF pickups with DC resistance from 6.5K up to 9K. So how does Gibson attempt to reproduce a sound that really doesn't exist? Well, they listened to and collected as many authentic vintage PAFs as they could and by consensus determined what were the best qualities of each pickups and tried to put them all together in one using vintage correct components. So we have the Custom Bucker. It's an unpotted pickup, as all PAFs were, which means that there's no wax used to seal all the wire and pickup components together. They use about 10,800 turns of the 42 gauge enamel coated wire around an Alnico 3 magnet, which is kind of interesting because the Alnico 3 magnet is actually the one that was used least in the original PAFs. But according to the Gibson factory, this was the magnet that allowed them to recreate the combination of the qualities that they wanted in this pickup. And these pickups are also wound unbalanced, which means that the slug coil in these have a few more turns of wire than the screw coils do. And that allows them to tune the sound. Uh, but all the nerdy details aside, these are great sounding pickups. I think you have to agree. So let's run through all the sounds of these pickups here. I'm going to run them through our Mesa Fillmore here on a clean channel and with a little bit of gain because we all like hearing them like that as well. So here we go. Here is the neck pickup on this. Wow. Okay, I'm not going to let it stop sustaining, but just a very round, warm sound from this neck position, and it doesn't change that much during the decay. It remains, you know, very articulate 
it's just a full range sound all the way around. Now, prior to Gibson developing the custom Bucker pickups, the pickups in their arsenal that were supposedly the closest to the original PAFs in output, sound, specs, everything else, were the Burst Bucker series. And this is a beautiful standard 1950s from their original collection. Uh, we're going to take a listen to the Burst Bucker 1 and the Burst Bucker 2 see how they stand up to the custom buckers. I'm going to start on the neck pickup, the Burst Bucker 1. So what do you think? The Burst Buckers are great sounding pickups, but these Custom Buckers just have a brilliant, smooth attack. Uh, the high end is just incredible on them. No harshness and a really fat, tight, low end. It's just a, a very complex tonal balance, and it doesn't change that much during the decay of the note. There's just more happening with the Custom Buckers. Anyway, if you all have any questions about these pickups, this beautiful guitar, or any guitar or amplifier, give the guys at More Guitars a call. Uh, or visit us at More Music in Evansville, Indiana. These guys are the experts on every brand they sell, and it's their mission to hook you up with the exact piece of gear that's going to be best for your playing needs. So give them a call. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on social media, and of course with the holidays coming up, you need to sign up to our mailing list because we have got some incredible deals coming up that you're only going to hear about if you're on our mailing list. So keep in touch. And again, thanks for watching, y'all. I will see you soon. Everybody have a great day. And from everybody here at More Guitars, we love y'all. Take care. <laughs>